Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be drawing with my Copic markers. So today I'm going to be drawing Pokemon, but with a little bit of a twist. I'm going to be giving them new forms and these forms are going to be seasonal variants. And the season that I'm talking about today is Halloween or spooky season. <laughs> Now to start this off, I'm actually going to be putting uh, pencil to paper and I'm going to be sketching traditionally. I just felt like sketching this way this time. I like to mix things up. Now, if you haven't guessed, the first Pokemon that I'm sketching today is Bonsly. Now he's not the first Pokemon you think of when you think of spooky Pokemon, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make him creepy. And to do that, I'm taking the ball thingies off his head and replacing them with skulls and straight away he feels like some strange, eerie, creepy creature. Now pair that with a blank, staring, vacant expression on his face and we have ourselves a pretty creepy little dude. Now the next one we're sketching today is a bit of a random one. I actually decided to pick Shinx for this. I felt like I could possibly do something very fun and Shinx is also one of my favorite Pokemon, so I just couldn't help myself. Now the whole aesthetic we're going for today with Shinx is a witch's familiar. Now Shinx is actually quite cat-like and a lot of witches have cats as their familiars and I just felt like it fit really well. So here we have a cheeky, sly looking Shinx on a broom with a witch's hat and it looks pretty cute. Now I did actually change a few of Shinx's details just because I wanted it to feel a little bit more Halloween-y and uh, you know, make him look like he was possibly a bit darker than the usual cute innocent Shinx. He has more sort of sharp angled eyes as well as more spikes along his back and later on I'm actually changing the patterns and the colours on him too. Now this third one actually took me a while to decide because I wanted a, a sort of larger Pokemon but I also wanted to add the aesthetic of a pumpkin into this because that is very very Halloween-y but I didn't want to go with the obvious thing of like Bulbasaur or Ivysaur or Venusaur because you do see that a lot with Halloween Pokemon. There's usually a Bulbasaur with a pumpkin on its back and I really love that idea but I also don't want to steal it so I'm going for something different. Now pumpkin is a plant so I decided to still pick a grass type and what I actually did was I went on a random Pokemon generator and I basically just went few uh, through a few different ones just to see what would come up with and what ideas that might spark and I decided on the Pokemon Steenie. Now Steenie actually does have a rather wide sort of bulbous part where her hips should be and I felt like that would work really really well for a pumpkin. So now's the time for the line art for this artwork and I actually decided on digital line art mainly because I just really like the results when I end up with you know crisp lines and stuff that I just can't get with when I do traditional line art. Also the place where I get it printed, Officeworks, has this really awesome paper that I love to use for Copic marker stuff and the ink that they actually use uh, for printing is this um, like a laser ink and it works really well and it's just really bold and dark. I really love the depth that laser ink can give you that just traditional ink really can't unless you're using something like uh, a paintbrush and ink but I ain't got time for that. So yeah, I'm just using my iPad Pro and Procreate to draw these with and uh, the brushes I'm actually using is the Studio Pen brush and the Technical Pen brush. Those are my favourite brushes for line art because they feel really natural like you're painting or you know drawing with a brush pen and they just look really good and crisp too. Now I just want to talk about a few of the details that I added onto Steenie and why I actually added those details. I really like the creepy sort of zigzag sort of mouth on the pumpkin. I just think it looks kind of creepy and just adds a little bit more detail while upping the sort of creepy effect. And I just really like how she's got these tiny little dainty fangs on her mouth. She kind of looks like a little vampire pumpkin thing. I don't know, it's cute. So with 
a little bonsai dude. I didn't want to go too full on with the details of the skulls. To be completely honest, I don't really like skulls. I find them creepy. But of course, that's what we're trying to go for with drawing. So to soften them just a little bit, I gave them, you know, sort of round edges and stuff. And, you know, uh, sort of simplified teeth. But just to add a little cool detail to this, I decided to make the skulls crying because Bonsly himself is always crying and I wanted to have his face just be like that sort of vacant staring expression. So I decided to add a bit of emotion onto those skulls, which definitely ups the creepy factor. Now just one of my favourite parts of this illustration is the Shinx, and that's mainly because I love Shinx. But also because I love the sort of witchy aesthetic, I love witches hats, I love brooms and stuff like that, I just think they're really cool. Now with your regular Shinx, he does have quite a lot of round details to him. I felt like I really wanted to emphasise sort of pointy details and you know change things just to make it a little bit more witchy. So as I said before, I gave him bigger and longer and more spikes along his back. And that was just to sort of emphasize that, you know, scared cat kind of look. But I also changed his sort of pointy hairstyle into more of a emo fringe kind of look. I felt like it went better with the mood of the piece, but also it was just really cute. Now I also changed the patterns on his fur as well. As you know, Shinx has these sort of stripes along his arms and a little bit of a black part in his back area. Now I decided to change that up and add more black to him and also just give it a bit more of a zigzag pattern just because I felt like that was more witchy and it was a chance just to give more sort of dark colors to this cute little guy. Now it's time to add them together into this illustration because I wanted them all in the same piece and that was really easy because this is a digital sort of you know print that I'm going to make and I also added the silhouettes of a Zubat and a Golbat into the background just to fill the area a little bit. So after getting it printed, now it's finally time to colour it in with my Copic markers. And I was just so excited about this part because to be honest, I've neglected my Copic markers a little bit. So this part was just really fun for me to finally get back onto the Copic bandwagon. And it was great. Now for the colours, I used a lot of oranges for Steenie here because obviously it, it, it worked with the pumpkin theme. The main orange colours I used were pumpkin yellow, maize, and of course a bit of canary yellow too, just for a bit of highlights. For her skin, I decided to add to the creepiness and I just used a bunch of greys. Normally I would not do this for even something that was a sort of pale light colour because I like to add colour in things, but today we're going for a little bit creepy, so grey in the skin is a good choice. For the pumpkin, I wanted to add to the creepiness and to do that, I decided to have the highlights on the bottom of the illustration so it was a bit of a, you know, like low lighted image. It just adds a little bit of uneasiness to the piece and really draws your eye to those creepy pumpkin teeth. Now, of course, I had to add a bit of pink to her eyes because they are pink in the original. And I added a bit of pink to her legs as well, just because I didn't want her eyes to be the only pink part of her. Now here's the final colours of Steeny. I really like how it came out. I like how the emphasis is on yellows and oranges instead of greens and pinks. It just adds to that creepy feel. For Bonsly, I decided to borrow a few colours from his shiny form just because I felt like it matched better with the theme and that was red. And I decided to put red on those skulls and just be a little bit bold here. And I really love that I did that because it just it adds just so much color to it and makes it really creepy too. Like why are the skulls red? Is that blood or are they just like creepy red skulls? Who knows? Are the skulls part of his body or are they like skulls from his victims? Or are they just like grown to like ward off like, like creatures? Who knows? I have no idea, but I love it. 
with the other colors on him i just decided to do a sort of warm brownie yellowy color because it makes sense because he's like a rock type now for shinx i decided on the typical colors you would think for shinx and that is like dark gray and blue however i changed it up just a little bit for the blue i changed it and i made it more of a purpley blue instead of a greeny blue and i just really like this change because it just gives it a really creepy feel but it's not too different from shinx where it doesn't look right it still looks like a shinx just changed up a little bit and that really light bright canary yellow just works really well with that soft purpley blue it almost looks like he's glowing a little bit which makes sense because he is electric type still maybe he's like electric and dark now that kind of makes sense So now it's background time and I decided on just a completely grey and black background because I wanted to emphasise the colours on the Pokemon themselves and not let too much of that, you know, get disappeared in different colours. I also felt like a nice sort of dark grey background would soften up the silhouettes of the Zubat and Crobat just a little bit because I felt like they stood out just a little bit too much. Now I did keep a white outline around the Pokemon themselves because I wanted them to still stand out really nicely and a white outline with a dark background really does help with that. I decided to go with some stormy sort of clouds in the background and I had a lot of fun just blending out those greys and uh, really making a mess with it too. I kind of did so many layers over the top of each other and then I blended it with different greys here and there and I think the results look pretty good. It still didn't have what I wanted though and I decided to go over the top with just a little bit of colourless blender and drop some ink onto these just to sort of add a bit of a bubble effect and that really helped just to add a little bit more eeriness to the piece. This is a really fun technique, but you've got to be careful not to drop the bubbles too close to the Pokemon because it can really affect the ink. So you really don't want to do it too close and, you know, possibly mess up your beautiful shading. After this, it is time to add some highlights with my gel pen and just fix up that little uh, white outline around them as well because I'm not completely neat with that, especially when I start blending the background, I can accidentally cover that up or make it a bit too thin. So the gel pen really helps with fixing those mistakes. So here's the final results for this artwork and I love it so much. I have missed using my Copics uh, so much. I love using my Copics and I love blending with them and I love the bright colours that you can get with them and I love drawing Pokemon with them. <laughs> That's never going to change. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please smash like and subscribe to get your scribble fix in the future. And if you have something to say about this art, please comment it below in the uh, comment section. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So on that note, I hope you all have a lovely day and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.